day to join my colleagues in the Congressional Black Caucus and will continue to work with them and proceed to analyze uh, the very wrong-headed decision that was made by the United States Supreme Court on the question of affirmative action. I thank the gentlelady from Florida, the gentleman from New York, and certainly the gentleman from Nevada uh, in their leadership. But I rise today as a clear recipient of affirmative action, and particularly in higher education. I may have been admitted on affirmative action, both in terms of being a woman and a woman of color, but I can declare that I did not graduate on affirmative action. This is my personal story. But as I read the Supreme Court opinion, uh, led by Justice Roberts and another- All right, guys, so we got to talk about a politician that I think is a prime example of what I mean when I say that we're not sending our best to Congress, okay? Because this is something I've been thinking about a lot recently, especially after the Tucker Carlson interview with uh, Vladimir Putin, that, you know, I don't think that the leaders in America are nearly as smart as somebody like Putin. And that's not really to- praise Putin like they say it's just an observation right that our leaders are just not operating at the same level that other leaders around the world are operating at and it's just not Putin right you can look at somebody like Nayib Bukele who is the leader of El Salvador he's turned that country around uh Javier Mele who is the leader of Argentina he's currently in the process of turning that country around I'm just saying uh from an intellectual perspective, <laughs> we're just not sending our best to Congress, right? We're not sending our best to lead this country. And this story is exactly what I'm talking about. As Sheila Jackson Lee, who admitted that she was an affirmative action admit into uh, Yale, okay, which is an Ivy League university, uh, she is currently being mocked because she told a group of students at Booker T. Washington High School that the moon is made up of mostly gas, okay? And she said this during the solar eclipse or before the solar eclipse uh, in anticipation of it. She she essentially got something very basic wrong about the moon, okay? So without further ado, roll the clip. Provide unique light and energy so that you have the energy of the moon at night and sometimes you've heard the word full moon. Sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, which is made up mostly of gases. And that's why the question, the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? Are the gases such that we could do that? The sun is a mighty powerful heat that is almost impossible to go near the sun. The moon is more manageable. And you will see uh, in a moment, or not a moment, you'll see in a couple of years that NASA is going back to the moon. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? Now, this woman who was on the Space Exploration Committee claimed that the moon is made up of <laughs> mostly <laughs> gases. When that's just... This is not true. Maybe she was thinking about Jupiter or Uranus. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, the moon is is rocky, okay? Uh, for a long time, scientists thought that the moon had no atmosphere, but it, in fact, has a very, very, very thin uh, exosphere, okay? Uh, but the moon <laughs> is, in fact, made up of, you know, rocks, okay, and minerals. Um, it's not mostly made of, of gases, okay? And... Uh, this is something, a comment that Sheila Jackson Lee is receiving a whole lot of backlash for justifiably because this has been, you know, a very, very, very interesting week as you've had people, Democrats, liberals, uh, showing us just how uneducated they really are. Okay, like, for example, Sonny Holston, one of the cackling hands on The View, recently got backlash for suggesting that solar eclipses and earthquakes were 
um, the result of climate change. Leaving, we've got a solar eclipse. Uh, we've she got the earthquake. Down the she ran down the hallway. The and rapture then, is here. The rapture's here. And then also I learned that the cicadas are coming. Cicadas. Cicadas. Although I love for the, the first time in cicada, cicada. like no, no, 100 tomatoes, years. No, 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 no. no. Two different, no, two, no well, they, this is what I read. There's two, two, different, there's times two of, different kinds of cicadas Yes, two different times, times are coming. The good cicadas but, and the bad cicadas. But no. for the first time <coughs> in, in many, many years. No, every 17 years this happens well that's not what i read but maybe <laughs> but, you know maybe well, you know better I, but in I a way say all those all those things together would maybe lead one to believe that you know either climate change exists that's more or something point. is really or something going going returning that's quite so not at the mercy of climate change it's underground no. it can't I don't it, think it, that's it happens How and, the, and the, kind of the eclipse they've known about the eclipse coming because eclipses happen right so climate change is why we have solar eclipses okay according to Sonny Halston, which was an extremely stupid comment, okay? And again, it really does show you how we're not sending our best to Congress. We're also not putting our best on TV. But when it comes to Sheila Jackson Lee, she is a special level of stupid because she has made quite a bit of stupid comments over the years that, um, again, it just leaves a whole lot to be desired of our so-called leaders. I've held an AR-15 in my hand. I wish I had it. It is as heavy as 10 boxes that you might be moving. Uh, and the bullet that is utilized, a 50 caliber, these kinds of bullets, uh, need to be licensed and do not need to be on the streets. There's no hunting purpose. There's no purpose. You can buy the brace without a background check. But when it becomes a dangerous weapon, when that brace changes the gun's legal status and makes it in essence, the same that caused a mass shooting at a Boulder, Colorado supermarket. The stabilizing brace made and a shorter barrel made a pistol under federal gun regulations. Here's a gun I carry every single day to protect myself, my family, my wife, my home. This is a XL Six Hour P365. Comes with a 15 round magazine. Here's a seven round magazine, which would be less than what would be lawful under this bill if this bill were to become law. It doesn't fit. So this gun would be banned. I hope the, gun, the gun is not bill. loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. Here's a so point that of order. Is exactly what the Democrats want to do. Now let's just take the policy objectives that they're trying to accomplish and look at the municipalities that have actually passed it. Maybe I should offer a good thanks to the distinguished members of the majority, uh, the Republicans, my chairman and others, for giving us an opportunity to have a deliberative constitutional discussion that reinforces the sanctity of this nation and how well it is that we have lasted some 400 years operating under a constitution that clearly defines what is constitutional and what is not. And I want to say to my colleagues, that I stand here asking us to do what we did not do in Vietnam, was to recognize the valiant and outstanding service of our men and women, and to understand victory had been achieved. Today we have two Vietnams, side by side, north and south, exchanging and working. We may not agree with all that North Vietnam is doing, but they are living in peace. I would look for a better human rights record for North Vietnam, but they're living side by side because that was a civil war. And because the leadership of this nation did not listen to the mothers and fathers who, bared, who borne the burden of 58,000 dead and did not declare victory, the mounting death, the violence continued going up and up. Rather than understanding the political nature of the war in Vietnam, we did not listen to those families. Yeah, so apparently Sheila Jackson Lee, on top of believing that the moon <laughs> is made of mostly gases, uh, also believes that uh, the Constitution is 400 years old, that today there are two Vietnams, uh, and that an AR-15 uh, weighs as much as 10 moving boxes. Yeah, this is who we're sending to Congress, and apparently everybody, including her staff, is stupid, Except her.
I, I don't want you to do a goddamn thing. I want you to have a fucking brain. I want you to take Reddit. I want you to say Congresswoman of a such and such state. That's what I want. That's the kind of staff that I want to have. So some stupid other motherfucker did it. You, and, and I don't have the information. Nobody sent me the information. I need to uh, ensure my uh, schedule. And, uh, you know, it's, it's Google did it. Shit ass did it. Fuck face did it. And nobody knows a goddamn thing in my office. Okay? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, including the person that's supposed to be in charge of the office, running the office, right? The, the, the person that the office belongs to, Sheila Jackson Lee, apparently doesn't know anything either, right? Again, it's just so hilarious, right? This is a hilarious story in my opinion. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she is responding to her critics, okay? This is what she had to say. Representative Sheila Jackson Lee Democrat from Texas fired back Tuesday at critics who corrected her for claiming the moon is made of gases. The Yale educated representative made the remark while taking in a Monday solar eclipse at Booker T. Washington High School in Houston, Texas. In an address to students, she encouraged them to get excited about outer space. Quote, you have the energy of the moon at night and sometimes uh, you've heard the word uh, full moon, the former ranking member of the Space and Aeronautics Subcommittee said, uh, sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, which is made up of mostly gases. Wow, incredible stuff. Can't believe it. Sitting Ivy League educated congresswoman claiming that the moon is made of gases. Only in America, bro. Only in America. In that address, she went on to explain it is, quote, almost impossible to go near the sun. After being wildly mocked for the comments online, uh, Rep. Lee fired back Tuesday. Quote, obviously I misspoke and meant to say the sun, but as usual, Republicans are focused on st stupid things instead of stuff that really matters, she said. What can I say, though? Foolish thinkers lust for stupidity. Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. It's one thing if this was just a one-time thing, right? But you have a history of making these types of comments, right? How do you explain <laughs> claiming that there are two Vietnams today, right? I don't understand. Apparently, she also made a comment in the past where she basically thought that humans um, walked on Mars, right, instead of the moon. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. Okay, this is uh, somebody that used to be a ranking member uh, on the space committee. Amazing stuff. She added, Republicans, quote, should be focused, uh, focusing on issues like prenatal care, building more affordable housing, and more reduction of student loan debt as uh, President Joe Biden is. Uh, Republicans have pointed out some questionable comments by uh, Rep. Lee in the past. Rep. Uh, Margaret Hogman, um, the Rep. Republican from Wyoming, told the National Desk in March the Lone Star representatives stopped the transgender murder epidemic act was made up. Nonsense. <laughs> All that was for was so Sheila Jackson Lee could sit up there, uh, pontificate about nonsense for five minutes. <laughs> she said in 2022, Rep. Lee suggested uh, President Joe Biden's low approval rating was due to voters being frustrated with the summer heat. <laughs> yeah, so again. This woman has a history of making stupid comments. I mean, who knows? I mean, these are the type of people that will claim that black people built a colony on the moon, right? <laughs> Since they love to say that black people built everything, right? They'll say, well, black people built a colony on the moon, right? They built everything, okay? Uh, this is what they'll say. They'll say stuff like that. They'll say all types of crazy stuff. Um, but, you know, hey, I, I, I just think stories like this are just another example of what I mean when I say, yes, there's a lot to be desired when it comes to who we're sending to Congress. I mean, seriously, we're not sending our best. We're not sending intellectuals, even the people that are going to these Ivy League universities that are supposed to be the most educated among us, apparently are idiots, right? And again, that's the problem, right? A lot of the issues that we have uh, in our government is the fact that the people that we're sending there just aren't the best and the brightest, okay? And it really is a sign of the fact that we have lowered standards in this country, okay? And, um, you know, we just don't have high expectations, even for those that are supposed to be our leaders. And it really is a damn shame, okay? I think that Sheila Jackson Lee is, is a good example of a leader that, again, if 
you know, voters were doing the right thing, okay, <laughs> we were sending our best to office, she would be nowhere near, nowhere near, uh, you know, the seat that she's in, right? She, she just shouldn't be there, okay? Just shouldn't be there. Can you imagine her making decisions about things like AI, okay, and cutting edge technologies, right? She, she, she can't understand it. There's no way she can understand it. She can't even understand guns, right? But yet we have these people making decisions about things they know absolutely nothing about, right, at all. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.